in a relational database system, only values that are consistent with the data type for that column are permitted. Many times, though, this is not enough, as there may be reasons to place additional constraints on what data can be entered into a table. In this video, we look at the following four types of constraints. Not null, default, unique, and check. The first one is the not null constraint. A column with a not null constraint cannot be null. This constraint is specified when we create the table by adding the not null declaration after the data type. If a column in the table has a not null constraint, and no value was entered for this column when we insert data, an error will result as the not null constraint is violated. In the example shown here, student underscore name has a not null constraint, meaning that this column cannot be null. The second constraint we look at is the default constraint. When an insert into statement does not specify a value for a column that has the default constraint, the database system will use the value specified by the default constraint as the value. The default constraint is specified when we create the table by adding the word default and then the default value after the data type. For example, the following SQL statement, create table employee underscore salary, employee underscore ID integer, comma, salary float default 10,000, sets the default value of the salary column to 10,000. Next, we attempt to insert data into the employee underscore salary table with the following SQL statement. Insert into employee underscore salary, employee underscore ID, values 50. In the new row that's added, the salary column will be 10,000 even though no value was specified for the salary column in the insert into statement. This is because 10,000 is the default value for the salary column. The third constraint is a unique constraint. When a unique constraint is applied to a column, that column cannot contain duplicate values. The unique constraint is specified when we create the table by adding the word unique after the data type. An attempt to insert data that violates this constraint will result in an error. In the example here, student underscore ID has the unique constraint and therefore all rows must contain a different value for student underscore ID. The fourth constraint is a check constraint. A check constraint is used to make sure that data entered satisfies a certain criteria, thus ensuring data quality. The check constraint is specified when we create the table by adding the word check and then the condition after the data type. For example, let's say we have a student underscore grade table that is generated by the following SQL. Create table student underscore grade, student underscore ID integer, check, student underscore ID greater than 100, comma, grade integer. And we subsequently attempt to execute the following insert into statement. Insert into student underscore grade student underscore id comma grade values 10 comma 80. It will result in an error because a value of 10 for student underscore id violates the check constraint which requires that student underscore id be greater than 100.